we talk about anything, OG, let's, let me just ask a serious question off the rip, man. What is your annual budget on hats? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, the, hat, the hat budget is, you know, it's first, whatever it is, and then I take care of the kids' school and all that stuff. Because like, every time I see the hat, I never see a hat repeat itself. It's just hats, just a bunch of hats. Does your wife have any room for her shoes? That's, that, that's, that's the constant battle. If the hat, <laughs> my hat's against her shoes, well, I've lost. I, I definitely <laughs> lose in that battle for sure. Now, I had the honor of doing, you know, morning radio in Birmingham for almost 15 years, and a lot of comedians, a lot of OGs came through when I was young in the game. And something that I peeped about you all, y'all always came in town, when you had the time, you come in town a day early, yeah. and go to the Black Mall, parlay with the people, do your shows, then on Saturday, when you can sleep in the hotel, go to the Black Barber Shops, yeah. parlay with the people. You're one of the most universally loved people in entertainment, top to bottom. It goes you, Sinbad, and hamburgers. In, in terms of... <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 I, <laughs> and I mean this seriously. What could politicians learn from comedians on just getting love from people and just interacting with folks? I mean, you know, really, you can't do it just at the time of that you're running for office or whatever. I mean, the idea is just actually, you know, making contact with people People looking people in the eye, feeling that vibe, you know, understanding who they are. You know, you see people out there, green New York. This is what I got this from Jay-Z. I see you, green New York hat. New York hat. <laughs> What's up, <laughs> You just play people out. You let them know you feel, you know? <laughs> All right. Yeah. I see you late clap. Okay, there's late clap over there. <laughs> and then they go, oh, wow, I'm a vote for Sam like, for mayor. Because he's on my hat. So, The Neighborhood. Yeah, man. Congratulations on 100 episodes. Yeah, thank you. First and foremost. And you're directing the 100th episode of yeah. this television program. And The Neighborhood, I've always been a fan of it because it's a show that positions itself within the issue of gentrification and not addressing the bigger issue, but just what it means to be a black person in a black neighborhood and have a white person come in and you figuring out how to keep your culture while also learning about someone else's. And in the writer's room, how are you all able to toe that line on that issue and make it so palpable for everybody? That was always the thing with the show. I mean, you know, it was interesting because when, when, when the show first came to me, it was, here comes the neighborhood. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. So wait a minute. That's a whole nother attitude right there. Yeah. I'm like, I'm already there. The neighborhood already exists, <laughs> right? So, so, you know, it was one of those things where, you know, we wanted to be able to tell a story of, like, how you feel when, when things come. You do want growth in your neighborhood. You do want a Starbucks and a Whole Foods, but you don't want to do that without losing the culture. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, you know, and, and that's the really how we tell the story. We got great actors. Uh, Max Greenfield, who plays Dave, is just, you know, legendary, funny man, killing it. Uh, Tashina Arnold, Beth Bears, yeah. uh, Marcel Spears, we kill it, man. And yes, Sean. Um, so... Now, talk about directing. What yeah. was that like? Because the episode premieres next week, but what was that like to, to, to sit behind that camera and go, you do this, and then go get me a water, mother... That was it. That was it. That's what oh, I did. <laughs> that was, that's what everybody loved. I was like, yo, you know, the director, you know, you actually, oh, you get to paint the picture. That's what I say. You know, you, you're the one that's kind of literally, literally putting all the colors on, on the canvas and just... And so, you know, you get to, you, you get to tell people, you, just for no reason, I don't like the tie. I don't like the tie. Lose the tie. And you know what? No, the tie good. Keep the tie on. You know, so, but, you know, but actually it was that kind of thing where I got great actors. You really just give them the best place to deliver and get off. And that's what I really learned as a director for the most part. I've been doing, I've directed a couple of episodes of, of The Neighborhood and then The Soul Man that I used to have my other show with Nisi. Yeah. And so, you know, that's, a, that's the idea, really just finding that place where a comic can get off or actor and just like show them, you know, show them where they need to be for it to happen. Well, I can't thank you enough for what you've done for not just the culture of entertainment, but also just the culture of stand-up comedy. And it's not something that you toot your horn about. It's not something that you talk about a lot publicly. But I want to give you flowers today, OG, because, you know, people try to measure stand-up comedians on the worth of, well, who had the best special or who had yeah. the best jokes. But behind the scenes at this same show, The Neighborhood, you have staffed and employed so many people, black, white, women, just so many people, and there's so many comedians. Yeah. You know, 
It's one thing to be someone in this industry and create a great comedy special, but I measure the worth of a comedian by how many homeowners does he create within his team. And it's a bunch of them over there. Thank you so much. Seth, the entertainer, everybody. Yeah,